Hi, I'm Christopher Davey. I head up the integration and API management software business unit here at WSO2. I hope you had a good time so far and have gained some insights as to why we consider open source so important in our software and also in our culture at WSO2. Um, I'm going to cover the sort of API management integration areas in a bit more depth and why we're still innovating and launching new open source software after almost 20 years. So integrations and APIs have been fundamental components of any digital business for well over 25 years. Uh, how you connect your services, access your data is all at the heart of every digital service and it will be for many years to come. So basic integration is the simplest connecting to services or system. Integration at scale is a different ball game and that's where tooling for creating and managing integrations and APIs is really critical. So I've worked in organization with over 2000 systems and services from spreadsheets to mainframes, um, various different languages and technologies. Uh, and if you don't have a clear strategy on how you join these up for access to data and how to use them to create new services, it can get very messy very fast. Uh, and that can build a huge amount of technical debt, which is very expensive, very disruptive, and massively time consuming to fix later on. Uh, well, you know, I've had to unpick some of this stuff. And it's uh, it's definitely uh, a very difficult task to, to do, you know, years after you, you've built all of these point to point connections. So that's where WSO started back in uh, 2005 with an ESB. And those sort of technologies were there to sort of address those challenges with the likes of service-oriented architecture and web services and SOAP uh, to sort of <clears throat> minimize those point-to-point -point integrations, do a more centralized hub-and-spoke uh, type model. And uh, back then, I think it was uh, WSO2 Titanium, which was quite an interesting name. Uh, I didn't know until recently as I looked back on the old websites and stuff and, and saw what the original name of the platforms were. But there's been a massive evolution in the WSO2 uh, in the products they offer. Many products, uh, many have come and gone, many have merged together, and um, their capabilities are now uh, in our core products we have today. Um, but from the integration space, we finally came up to micro integrator. So that's been through the uh, ESB, the enterprise integrator, uh, and now we're into our micro integrator. So it's still handling the core enterprise integration patterns that it did when it first started, but how it needs to do those and the range of them has sort of changed and evolved over the years. Um, so, you know, micro integrator can now handle centralized or decentralized architectures running containers or running VMs. You know, we like to maintain flexibility and we know different people are at different stages of their digital journey. Therefore, you know, you know, some might be very cloud native, want everything containerized, running Kubernetes. Others might still be uh, trying to produce that sort of more um, traditional architecture, so a style centralized running in in VMs. Now, you know, with integrations, the um, APIs are also sort of the synonymous. You know, you expose services, you connect to services via APIs of various different protocols and types but they're the main way to expose services and data today and it's continually growing and there's millions of apis worldwide you're interacting with apis every day on everything you do from your mobile banking to your uh, retail to you know accessing buildings to um, signing in um, to your know, hotels etc all of that's on sort of apis and integrations behind the scenes so the idea of sort of you know having to have all these apis is great but you know when you've got 10 20 30 fair enough when you start to get into the hundreds or today even thousands of apis how do you handle those and that's where sort of an api management platform comes in which gives you and gives the enterprises the ability to manage all those service apis that need to be exposed internally and externally provides um the, the at the core an easy way to develop govern and consume apis also to add all of the key sort of policy enforcement security authentication authorization so again really critical when you're exposing and dealing with data today especially with you know the 
the risk we've got with cybersecurity, etc. So, you know, having a way to easily manage and maintain that, you know what you're exposing, you can define the policies, you can define the approaches, you can uh, put sort of design governance as well as runtime governance around your APIs is absolutely critical for businesses these days. So they're sort of two of our core products in the sort of open source space. We do have many more. In addition to those, we have Ballerina, our open source uh, programming language designed for integration, and APK, our API platform for Kubernetes. Uh, I'm not going to go into much detail on those just now, and um, they should be covered in other talks. So the integration API challenges are still ramping up uh, as demand uh, for more services, more personalization, uh, as that grows, you want more on demand, on time, you know, lots of, uh, you know, especially the customer side of things, they want uh, sort of real time data, wherever they can get it through their mobile devices, etc. But not just that, you know, employees and business partners and third parties, you want to uh, connect with them and they want more modern, uh, fast, accurate services all the time. And all of that requires integrations APIs. There's, you know, that is the de facto way of doing it these days. Um, so, you know, this is a, a, a market that is just growing and growing and growing, and it's sh showing no signs of slowing down. You know, the more SaaS services and cloud services out there, you're still having to connect to those. Um, and, you know, the this is just something that, you know, we've got to, got to be able to handle, and that's where, you know, having these platforms that can handle this are, uh, are really critical um, uh, to sort of managing today's digital uh, systems and services. So, as I said, you know, with uh, although API uh, management and integrations aren't new, um, these are still really growing markets and they're getting to a, a bigger and bigger scale every year. Uh, and with new um, uh, technologies, um, like AI and integrating your AI services and um, exposing AI services to your customers. You know, that's just one thing that's come up, you know, recently. Uh, but, you know, there's a massive evolution there. Um, we've still got a lot to do. So uh, one of the key elements there, we are going to be launching the latest versions of API Manager and APK uh in q2 this year so we'll be delivering uh many new features but at the core we'll have a single control plane uh, for api management with ai enhanced features in both the developer portal uh and in api testing and evaluation uh, we're also releasing a new development experience for our micro integrator uh, replacing our integration studio so phase one of that will be going live in q2 uh, early Q2 this year um, and again that will have AI assist features because this is where we're looking to focus around how do you meet the challenge of these new APIs and, and, and integration so you've got to improve developer experience you've got to make creating them and consuming them a easier uh, and simpler process uh, and that's something we've got a, a, a strong focus on um, obviously security we're always focusing on that but also meeting the challenges of uh, governing and managing these APIs and integrations uh, understanding what you've got what they do uh, that's a real challenge for the sort of large organizations as their scale starts to grow so all of this is needed so that we can help our customers build those digital solution experiences today and you know this is something that you need worldwide and i know um uh, it's been mentioned in the previous talks around you know the advantages open source gets as you can use it without limits and wherever you need it and easy adoption and this is where it's really critical when you look at all of this evolution we've done all of these these uh different product versions, uh, all the stuff that's come and gone before it, all of this has, has been put into a fully open source model. So you've got over almost 20 years worth of experience and development, thousands and thousands of hours uh, of work available, free to use under an open source model, which is always still staggering uh, to me today. I used to be a, a W2 
customer before and you know we evaluated um uh, wso2 utilizing the open source um uh, binaries and uh, tested it before we even talked to um looking at getting the subscription uh, and support later on uh, and it just made it very easy to to do so and you can see how the product's been uh, developed and you know it gives a lot of uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, um, sort of freedom in how we want to use it and evolve it in the uh, in the organization so it was great um i know that was a little bit of a wood stop tour i hope that was uh, useful and I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, rest of the talks and um, thank you very much. Yeah.